Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Living Astrology with Janet Hickox. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back, and let's chat about what is going on up in the stars above today. I have to chuckle because I am feeling very disorganized for having such intense energy going on in earth signs. Uh, and that's because I have this thing where I end up getting involved in people's conversations and <laughs> just ran out of time. So I do have some things to talk about with you though this morning and I want to wish my youngest daughter a very happy birthday today. She turns double threes, 33. And uh, I meant to tell you this, Jennifer, if you're ending up listening this morning, uh, 33 is the one age that for some reason sticks out in my mind uh, as uh, a year that a lot of things were going on. It's like I remember how old I was because some things, you know, were happening in my life. Things were a little bit chaotic. Those double threes are kind of uh, a powerful creative energy as well as a powerful way to lose focus if you're not careful. So scattered energy yet extraordinarily creative and self-expressive. So a great year on board for you as well as whatever else is going on in your life over the next 12 months as we begin to rebuild, regenerate, and create a new world uh, or at least the potential of one. So good morning to everybody and oh Jennifer I see you out there. Great to see you. Um, I'm sure other people will join us here shortly. Let's chat about what is going on up in the sky today because the moon is in Virgo, which does give us that edge of work and practical application and being able to you know, clear off the desk and get some things done. Remember yesterday I was talking about the moon in Virgo and I said there was absolutely no way I was going to get my desk cleaned off. Well, actually I did get some stuff done and it was pretty empowering. And uh, yet, today I look at the desk and I go, what did I do? Because I don't see it now, except that I had stacks of paperwork and now I only have books and notebooks. I might figure out a place for those today. We'll see. <laughs> um, so today, instead of talking about the moon in Virgo, we're going to talk about the moon and the connections to other planets that she is making during her uh, last full day in the sign of Virgo. Because today she's actually opposing Neptune. She's in a sextile to Mars, which is a big player today as he shifts gates in the human design. There is a trine from the moon in Virgo to Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn as we move later into the day. And then we've also reached the last square of the moon to the sun or reaching the crisis in consciousness point. And we'll want to talk about what that means. As well today, we have, like I said, Mars moving out of the gate one where it has been for the last week and or week and a half and moving now into the gate 43. And I love the gate 43, even though it's sometimes a bit chaotic for us because in, it, it's an energy that sits on the Ajna, the second center down in your human design. But it's a gate of epiphany and insight. Who doesn't love that? right? So you may have been struggling with an issue or maybe you've been, you know, some things have been working deep within you and still are, but likely over the next few days, there may be some really key things that come up and out of you. Yes, indeed, that is the most wonderful of energies. So, and then today we'll talk about the, um, the energy of the Pleiadian earth uh, calendar and move on from there. So let's see who else is joining us out here this morning. I'm missing somebody there. Linda, good morning to you. Marissa, Jennifer says, thanks, Mama. Yes, you're most welcome, sweetie. Mimi, good morning. Asa, good morning. Marissa, good morning. Dang it, I'm late. You're not that late. You're not that late. I actually started just about four minutes ago uh, wishing my daughter happy birthday, kind of eating up space until we got to the good stuff. So you're all good, uh, Miss Marissa. And Michelle, good morning to you. Um, she says, good morning. I love your hair. <laughs> you like my hair. So funny story this morning, I'm drying my hair. I, I tell you guys this all the time. These weird things come to me when I'm putting on my mascara or drying my hair or in the shower this morning. It was when I was drying my hair. I thought, oh, wow, my hair looks so pretty when I take the diffuser and I put it up, you know, and it just kind of falls into these like little, you know, balls as I'm drying it, you know, holding up the ends. Uh, to get dried and to get curly. And I went, I wonder if I could get away with wearing my hair that way. So I put my hair up and then 
I promptly panicked because I thought it looked dumb or too juvenile or I don't know what the heck went through my mind. So I take a picture and I send it to my daughter and I said, do you think this looks okay? Can I get away with doing this? And she said, yes. So here I am with my hair in this new sort of Mickey Mouse ears sort of do, but it, it kind of feels good to do something different sometimes, right? So that's my thing today. Do something different. Um, so thank you, Michelle, for saying that. And Elisa, good morning to you. So let's talk then about some of the major transits that the moon is making today, because one is an opposition to Neptune. So if the moon is in Virgo and Neptune is in Pisces, they create an opposition point. So the moon is your soul energy, your inner emotional self, the, the inner uh, the needs that you have as an individual on an emotional level, and it is also a timing mechanism, right? So timing, it clicks in different things about time. And then Neptune is a very spiritual planet. It moves us to become more uh, involved with unconditional love, uh, with more spirituality, to become more intuitive. It pushes us inward, and the moon in Virgo is actually pushing us more to the practical so we have kind of maybe the, the coming to some form of a balance between our inner and our outer world. But likely what happens in the beginning is uh, there are, you know, subconscious patterns and subconscious complexes that we all have that are likely triggered during a transit like this. And given that Mars is sitting at gate 43, they may come up in these startling ways and in ways that allow you to see how you could release it or how you could move forward, or what does it all mean that this has been happening in my life? So in other words, there's sort of this puzzle, this jigsaw puzzle of your life and of the complexes in your subconscious mind that have been running the show. And today, maybe that jigsaw piece that you needed to make all of the rest of the pieces coherent, come out, come together and release you from guilt or from an inferiority complex or any of the other kinds of, of issues that we as human beings hold as our core wounds, betrayal, guilt, shame, uh, abandonment, um, blah, 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 abuse. So there's a lot of things that today can come up for evaluation, not for beating yourself up with and have maybe it revealed to you in a way that allows you to release it and move on. So that's the awesome thing. Also there with the moon in an opposition to Neptune, be toxin free today and even maybe tomorrow and maybe even we should have started this conversation yesterday because neptune rules the lymphatic system and all of those little germy virus bacteria things that can cause us to get ill that can cause us to react in some way like for instance um you may go along in your life and you put on the same perfume every day and then suddenly it, your body reaches a toxin overload with it. Unbeknownst to you, maybe you are allergic to it. Or maybe you've been using the same lotion or the same cream and it suddenly creates an issue. Maybe you've been drinking coffee all your life and now suddenly you can't because. So we're, we're being aware today then with our bodies in terms of toxins. And not only the toxins that you might be taking in or putting on your body, but the environment that you find yourself in. Is it a toxic environment? Are there uh, individuals in your life that you would better be, you better be, that you would be better off without? Uh, is there a toxic uh, work environment that you're in? And if so, this is the opportunity to start to clean it up to begin to release yourself from being in that environment or using those products or doing those same things over and over again. Also today, the moon in Virgo is in a sextile to Mars in uh, Scorpio. So Mars is still in that sign of depth and digging up the dirt, looking at your passions, looking at all of the undersides of things, which could be your motivations, which could be the reason you're, again, uh, maybe a connection to the subconscious, uh, past lives, uh, a lot of different spiritual type energy lies there where Mars is digging into Scorpio. And of course, we had a lot of planets move through that earlier in the fall, and Mars is the last one there. And in a sextile to uh, the moon today, we have the capacity for courage and self-reliance, courage to face the inner demons, courage to let go of what is no longer serving us. We have the capacity 
to work on taking the initiative. So Mars and the moon today are in a very favorable sort of um, connection with one another. A sextile, by the way, is a 60 degree angle between the planets. And the relationship of a 60 degree angle is where each of them are somehow able to bring their gifts and talents to the table and, you know, co-mingle them so that, you know, both parties get to use or get access to all the gifts and all the talents that they bring. Mars brings that action, that courage, that boldness, and uh, the moon brings the emotional well-being and the connection to your inner being. So we have a really good day that way. Um, then the moon is also later in the day today. So the Neptune and Mars things are happening earlier in the day. Later in the day, the moon will come into a trine, a 120 degree angle uh, with Saturn and Pluto. So, you know, Saturn and Pluto, they've been our deconstruction and reconstruction crew, and they are coming closer and closer to their conjunction of January 12th. Even so, they are within orb of one another even now. So we see in the outer world, the deconstruction going on and hopefully leaving us with the, the tools and the um, uh, uh, supplies to rebuild and reconstruct as well. Um, and with the moon in a trine to these two, here's where we get to really see perhaps the reasoning for what is happening. And, and maybe not necessarily liking what is happening, but understanding that it's a part of a bigger picture, that there seems to be a patience or a self-control or a, a strength that we have as individuals to weather this storm of craziness that's happening in our personal lives or in our outer world um, and, you know, holding on. We have, we can draw on inner strength and inner security. We can default to common sense. Wow, what a deal. Common sense, right? Um, it's great to have pie in the sky and ideals, but often without realism or without common sense, they don't go anywhere, right? So we have to be able to have both. One stimulates the imagination and creativity while the other one stimulates the nuts and the bolts to be able to put this together. So we have that going on. Um, also, the moon in this kind of relationship with both Saturn and even somewhat Pluto um, recalls us to the past. We have a strong attraction to the past on a day like today. And we may feel, we may have intense emotions or feelings about what we've experienced in the past. And it may even, in some people, I'm sorry, my nose is starting to run. It may even for some people create um, a, a strong emotional reaction to things that have happened in the past. So what I want you to think about with this kind of a transit on a day like today is that, you know, the past is a part of who you are, but the past is in the past. If we are willing to be able to take the best of the past and move it forward and we connect it with the best of the now, and the potential for the future, then we've built something of more lasting, sustainable qualities. So, you know, it drives me crazy when I hear these make America great again and all these kinds of things, because you can never go completely back to the past because it's not there. It's gone. Right. So the idea that we can go backwards to go forwards um, isn't really very sustainable. We could take the best and the brightest and we can move it forward but it ultimately it creates a new pathway forward into the future so be attracted to the things of the past bring the best of the past forward and then move on right don't hold on to it don't pine away for uh what was you know in in the past you have to bring it forward and use it in the now now pluto's connection here gives us a bit of obsessiveness today <laughs> Pluto and the moon, I always think Pluto and the moon come together and it is, uh, there's even a book written about the Pluto and moon conjunction and uh, opposition. It's called the Hades moon. And I can't remember who wrote the book and it's not sitting here in front of me, but uh, it, there's a very distinct connection when the moon and Pluto meet up to obsessive thinking, to, you know, being smothering instead of mothering, to, um, you know, taking things to the nth degree. Like if a little bit is good, then a whole lot is even better, right? So if I, you know, run a mile a day and today, today is a great day to run 26 miles. It doesn't quite work that way, right? If we get obsessed with an idea, um, then it, it can create 
issues for us, more problems than what we might have had to start with. Um, intense feelings and emotions can be triggered today. And there may be tears, there may be, you know, hysteric laughter, there could be all kinds of over the top bits of emotional display. And uh, that might just be, you know, temporary, it's not like this will last forever. Uh, but our emotions are sort of pinging around within us today. Our passions could also be ignited with uh, the combination of planets and things that are happening today. And I would say, I, I would say lean into that, lean into your passions, because it's really the part that's going to save us as we move into 2020. What are you passionate about and how do you want to work to bring that into reality? What more can you do? Now, finally, the last of the moon conjunctions or moon connections, not conjunctions uh, today, are really about the uh, crisis of consciousness that's occurring as the sun and the moon move into a square relationship. It's really the moon moving into a square relationship to the sun. Let's put it the right way because it's the moon that's the faster body and it was full this day last week. And that means this day, this week, we are coming to the final square before the new moon, which, by the way, the new moon uh, next Wednesday happens to be <laughs> a solar eclipse. So for those of us uh, on the time zones from uh, central time west, it will be on Christmas. For those of you on the east coast and those further over into Europe, it will be on the 26th, the day after. But there's something very powerful moving through us at this moment as I think really that eclipse that comes next week is, is, is really the beginning of 2020, right? We may have New Year's Day. We could say, you know, that's arbitrary. It's a calendrical day. Uh, it doesn't really have any real meaning in the big scheme of things, but a solar eclipse, li literally just a week before New Year's, that's really the time I see that the year begins. And then I see that our year almost ends next year at winter solstice, with the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter at zero degrees Aquarius. So our year feels a little bit skewed from the calendar. But in reality, remember, we're following a spiral of consciousness now. We're not just literally looking. I mean, I have to look at the calendar to see who my appointments are for the day, or if I have doctors that I have to go see, or if I have appointments or things that I must do but I don't need to look at the calendar to tell me when it's time to move through specific energies because it's it's literally doesn't have that kind of life to it. The kind of life that would get us through the evolutionary times that we're in is more the Pleiadian calendar or the Mayan calendar or the Chinese calendar. Um, the, the, the more ancient calendars that showed us that we were on a progression so the moon every month shows us that we're on a progression. It begins at the new moon. And then a week later, seven days later, we get to the first crisis point, the first challenge point, which is the challenge of uh, what kind of action are we going to take now? And then we get to the full moon and things come into fullness or that we see something revealed to us or that very powerful light shows us that we need to complete with something in order to move forward. Then we come to this point that we're at today. Today is where we might need to figure in the shift that we have to make on the inner realms in order to complete the intention or to manifest whatever it is that we're trying to work on in our lives. So the crisis of consciousness is like putting on the sorting hat in, in Harry Potter, <laughs> only instead of sorting people into houses, we are sorting out what works and what doesn't releasing what doesn't and keeping what does. So sorting, think about that. So it, it, of all the things that maybe have been in your experience since the new moon earlier in the month, uh, or it was late last month, uh, what do we want to keep and what do we want to release? That's what we can think of today. What's working, what's not. And you know how you can tell? Well, you can tell by the way you feel about what it is that you're experiencing. Does it feel good? If it feels good, keep it. If it doesn't feel good, let it go. If you don't have a sense of whether it feels good or not, it's always better to put it on the back burner for a while until you have clarity around what it is that you feel about something. So if you're not clear, it means that it's not time yet or there's still something more to the story, that you don't have all the facts, you don't have all the details, so you just set it aside, right? So. 
keep what you love, keep what feels good, keep what feels true, release what doesn't. And everything else goes on the shelf until you have clarity about it. I hope that makes sense to people. So let me know how you're feeling here. I'm going to take a look. Um, I woke up at midnight last night drenched in sweat. It was so weird. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys this. I wasn't going to say this because it's kind of scary, but I had, uh, I, I throughout my life have had, and Jennifer, if you're still listening, you know this has happened to me before, where I've had dreams, and in the dreams, I get messages, and it's usually messages about something big that's going to be happening. Rarely is, I've had big things that are personal as well in my dreams, especially when my mother and my uh, foster mother died, but this other times in my life, I see a map and it's almost like I'm ra I'm raising up above the map and I look back and I can see on the map what's going on. And the dream I was having wasn't clear as to what was happening, but I, I remember two things. One was beware the in the Eastern Pacific. And two, when I looked at the map, it came in and was showing Seattle. And I, I'm getting chills even thinking about that because I only live about, you know, an hour or so away from Seattle. And I woke up and I told my husband, I don't know what it is. I really don't. But it, uh, the words were, beware the Eastern Pacific. We live on the Eastern, the whole Pacific coast of the United States, um, Alaska, Western Canada, Mexico, all of that is considered the Eastern Pacific, even, you know, down South America ways. Because if you're looking, you know, pretty, anyway, Eastern Pacific. And the city I zoned in on was Seattle, but I have no clear picture of what it was. I don't know if it was an earthquake. The only other symbolic sort of thing I saw was if I was rising above the ocean and I was to look out at the Pacific, the beware point was on the Eastern Pacific, but something it looked like happened at the Western Pacific. And the picture in my mind was of like an Easter Island, uh, you know, those big heads, those big stone faces, um, like a big stone falling over. And um, I mean, I don't know, does that mean an earthquake with a tsunami that, you know, affects the West Coast? Is that, I, I don't know. So that to me woke me up at 541 this morning, almost drenched in sweat, uh, like you were uh, talking about, Elisa, and uh, not knowing exactly what that meant um, and hoping that by speaking it, I'm releasing it. Okay. Good morning, Allison and Colleen. Bob Eden, good day to you as well. It's 2 a.m. where you are. That must be somewhere down under. And uh, Bob, 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 I think you're in Australia somewhere, aren't you? And uh, coffee, anyone? Got my coffee. Uh, Kristen Page, good morning, and Karen Devine, good morning, and uh, Bob Eden says, Descartes was wrong, I feel, therefore I am right, very, very, so very profound, Bob, <laughs> I feel, therefore I am, as opposed to, I think, therefore I am, feelings, very, very powerful, and they are indicators, right, indicators of, of uh, what's true and authentic for you versus what isn't. And the only you know, caveat that I would have to say about that is remind yourself whether you are emotionally defined in your human design or not. If your human design has color in that emotional center, the bottom right triangle, then you are emotionally defined. So the emotions really are your true compass. If you are open in that part of your chart, then you are having, you have to ask the question about what you're feeling. Is this mine? Or is this someone else's? Because it's not always clear what you're feeling. So I, I guess a good rule of thumb would be if it feels good, it's correct. It's authentic. It's true for you. If it doesn't feel good or if you're not sure, then it isn't correct or it isn't the correct timing. So that should be, it sounds so easy when you put it that way. <laughs> And ideally, it's supposed to be easy to use your emotions to tell you what is true and correct and authentic and authoritative for you. But somehow we we don't, right? We get into our heads and the I think, therefore I am gets us all confused about what is true and what is correct. <laughs> so it's pretty funny. So today with the square of the sun and the moon, sort out what's real for you and what isn't. Release what isn't, keep what is 
and build upon that, right? Today's building energy between the moon and the, the contact she's making uh, would help to form a stable foundation, would help to uh, create sustainability. So there you go. And uh, let's see, let's look at the exploring energy of today. Today is nine exploring in the Pleiadian Earth calendar. And the nine energy is about harmonizing. Remember, the number is about the universal energy of the day. So no matter what life form you are, no matter what planet you might be on uh, in our solar system or in this universe, this Milky Way galaxy that we're in, all of life is, is resonant with the energy of nine, which is about harmonious interconnectedness. How do we all live and work and play together even with our differences, right? It's about being able to take the differences and, you know, still come together no matter what. And so creating harmony from opposites, right? That's what today's energy is about. Avoid discouraging feelings when faced with that opposition energy. So um, let's say you are very aware emotionally about what it is you desire. And today with the moon square the sun, something may come up that kind of blocks your path. If you really take a look at that and analyze, we've got moon in Virgo, it's very analytical. Um, what is it that's really causing the block? Is it something inside? Um, is it is it is it really something in the physical world or a thought or a belief that you have that keeps you from doing what you really want or what you really love or following that emotional energy? So um, when you're faced with that oppositional energy, default to what feels good, what feels correct or what feels right. They, I love how these days sort of dovetail with one another. So we're talking about the energy of the astrology of the day. But then if we look at the Pleiadian uh, uh, Earth astrology, it also works quite well with this energy. Now, exploring is the Earth energy. And it is about reviewing your options, reviewing your ideas, choosing which ones that you want to explore more in depth with and uh, being inspired to go deeper, to look wider even at what that idea is. Releasing the old and the limiting beliefs and the things that have been holding you back and keeping what's authentic and what's exciting and adopting today then an attitude of anything is possible. Anything is possible. It doesn't have to be uh, um, set in stone right now in front of you for you to see that it's possible because all things are possible in this particular uh, day. So exploring energy it feels very Sagittarius. And here we are, we're closing in on the end of Sagittarius, the sun in Sagittarius. So, um, you know, default to those things, what that make you feel good, that feel inspiring, find an idea or a, a, a concept and take it deeper and, and explore more about what it is that you want in your life. Releasing the old while you're in the process. Uh, Bob says, I'm in the Whitsunday Islands. I have no idea where that is, but that's cool. How do I know what is my truth? Whatever resonates with my heart. Um, I would say that's a good place. That's a good way to look at it, too. And Bob also says, as all are unique, there is no argument, only difference. So viva la difference. Hey, <laughs> I love it. Uh, that, it. That's a great way to look at it because we are we are those little pieces of the tapestry, right? And if you cut a piece of the tapestry out and say, I don't want that, what you have is a hole in your tapestry. And that doesn't look so good. Like if you have a huge quilt, I have a quilt sitting on my bed there. If I just cut out one of the hummingbirds in the quilt because I didn't like that hummingbird, uh, I would have a hole in my quilt. It wouldn't be whole anymore. It would be holy, holy, like lots of holes, a hole in it. And so, you know, its integrity would be uh, lost. So we don't want to lose the integrity of the tapestry of all of us as human beings. Uh, we want the we want the wholeness and we want to value each other's differences and recognize that our differences don't mean that we can't like each other or love each other. It just means that it's different, right? And that we have to be able to work together uh, on the planet. So how do we do that and still honor the differences? It's difficult in today's climate, isn't it? 
Okay, so any questions about anything we've been talking about so far? If so, go ahead and put those down here in the comment section. Now I'm going to go on to Mars now, moving into the gate 43, moving my coffee. So I want to tell you how many days we have this wonderful, delightful energy. Uh, Mars in uh, from today until uh, Chris, through Christmas Day. So the day after Christmas, that's interesting. It shifts right around the solar eclipse. And, uh, and then it moves into bounteousness. Nice. But for today and for the foreseeable for the next week, it'll be sitting at the gate 43, which sits on the Ajna and connects, reaching down toward the throat center. So here is what we would often call the channel uh, that connects that, the channel of breakthrough or the channel of genius. So Mars, an action planet sitting at the gate of genius, what does that tell you? It's time to take action on whatever it is that is your unique co contribution to the planet, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be the whole enchilada. It could be taking one step toward expression of that uniqueness that you are and bringing that out more and more. When we look at this gate through the gene keys, the lowest expression of it is deafness. La, 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 la. I can't hear. I can't hear. I don't want to hear. Um, not hearing is connected to not being able to express your joy and your thrill at breaking through all of those old patterns. So deafness leads us to the gift of insight, in sight, right? In inner eye, inner sight, intuition, and then ultimately to the epiphany, the aha, the breakthrough moment. And then from that breakthrough, it leads us down to the throat center for manifestation or communication, depending on whatever the type of breakthrough is that you are experiencing. But Mars as an action uh, planet or as a catalyzer begins this process and brings it um, up for us to consider. And then next week, as we move through that solar eclipse window, which we'll talk about more as we get maybe on Friday, we'll talk more about that. Um, as we get further in, it starts to bring us the benefit of having expressed those things through bounty. Now, what does that mean money? It could be, does that mean contacts? It could be, does that mean opportunities? Definitely. Uh, does it mean uh, sort of the cornucopia, right? Supplying us with all that we need in order to do what it is that we want to do and to, to move forward in our lives. So great, great energy. The only negative part of this whole thing is about that deafness. Will you open your ears to hear the song from your heart or the song coming from your emotions as opposed to listening to what your head is telling you? And if you really listen to what the mind says, is it very positive most of the time? I mean, sometimes it is, right? You can do this, get going, blah, blah, blah. But other times it's, you know, holding you back. So instead of letting your mind hold you back, this is a time to let your uh, heart and your emotional energy carry you forward. So there we go. Um, Bob Eden says, from the Mayans, the evolution of consciousness, consciousness is exponential, and we have just turned the corner. So hang on tight for a wild ride. <laughs> I feel like we've been on a wild ride for a while, and uh, definitely... The Mayan calendar, remember, as I talked to you all about that before, those puppet strings are cut, and we are now entering into our the fullness of being a co-creator to really recognizing the impact that we have when we are creating energy, when we're creating the world. So if we're creating difficulty, we're mismanaging our co-creative energy. Uh, but when we're creating from our passions or our hearts or our emotional high feeling um, or any emotional feeling, you're, you're in co-creation state. So that's what I think you're referring to, to, Bob. So good. Mimi says, it feels good to have this action mode, rearranging my study, studio, uh, living room. My Virgo moon likes this energy. Likely, I, if I remember correctly, Mimi, your Virgo moon is in the later degrees, like after 25, 26 degrees, something like that, maybe even 28 degrees. So, of course, that's where the moon will be moving across today. So you're actually getting another bump up in your energy. So anybody who has a Virgo moon uh, gets a boost. Anytime the moon is moving through the sign of, the, of your own natal moon, you get sort of a boost. 
it's almost like your own personal new moon where you are opening up to something new, something exciting, something revolutionary. Um, it starts your new cycle with the moon. So you just have to know your own chart in order to get to that information. All right, questions, anybody? Um, uh, the mind is always looking for answers, but the heart already knows. I think, yeah, that's very true too, Bob. Thank you for those reminders. Um, as we look ahead to tomorrow, tomorrow becomes a very busy day astrologically. There's a lot of planets besides the moon making connections. We have a lot of planetary action. Uh, you know, let me check something for you all because I also believe we go into a void, of course, moon at midnight 07 my time. So 3.07 a.m. for you all on the East Coast midnight 07 for us here on the west coast and that lasts until 204 a.m it's a very long not um void of course moon so the void of course happens while we're all sleeping which is good um, and when we wake up then the moon will have moved into the sign of libra changing up the energy focusing it more on relationships but also then squaring the Capricorn planets from the sign of Libra as Aries, Libra, Capricorn, and Cancer all form a square. And that means a, a cross, right? A cross. And that means anything in Libra is opposing Aries. Anything in Libra is uh, squaring Cancer and also squaring Capricorn. So we have the nodes across Capricorn and Cancer. We have Chiron over there in Aries and Eris also in Aries. So even while Libra is a more gentle sign and usually very much relationship oriented, there could be some scritchiness in those relationships as we are looking at what are we building in our relationships because it's squaring that Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, who else, Chiriclo, uh, series all in Capricorn right now. So um, also later in the week, we have Venus moving into Aquarius. She moves out of Capricorn and starts to take us into new territory uh, with what she talks about, with, with the energy that she brings up with uh, being in a different sign. So we'll talk about those things tomorrow. Also um, for next week, I believe for sure I will be on air on Monday on christmas eve day i will likely be on air christmas day i won't be on air day after christmas i will likely be on air so it's really only christmas day for sure that i won't be i'm i'm hesitant about christmas eve day because my older daughter is having surgery that day and i'm not sure what time i need to be uh in seattle for that so eh. If I'll, I'll give you more information as I know, but likely I will be on between now and then except for Christmas Day. And then we'll means maybe Friday and Monday, we'll take a really closer look at that solar eclipse that's approaching so that everybody's ready for that. Uh, Mimi, correct on my moon. Yes, I knew you and I both share a Virgo moon. Mine's just earlier in the sign. Yesterday was my day. Uh, today's likely your day. And Bob, I'm 14 hours ahead of you at GMT plus 10. Wow, 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 wow. So maybe you should go to bed, Bob, <laughs> get some sleep. And uh, that is literally it for me this morning, unless some of you have questions or comments besides uh, what we've already talked about. Um, uh, I, you can always email them to me uh, or you can po pop them right here into the chat even after the show is not live anymore and I can see those comments and get back to you. Or you can messenger me, or there's so many ways to get a hold of me. Um, you can let me know what's going on with you guys. All right, uh, B, hello. Wishing your daughter a successful surgery and quick recovery. Thank you very much, B, that is very sweet of you. And uh, I'm, it's, it's a minor thing that she's having done just an interesting day to have it done. Luckily, she's having it done before the eclipse. And uh, I checked her chart out yesterday to make sure because I was, I think because I knew there was an eclipse coming, I was a little concerned. And I was like almost aghast when she had originally said Christmas Eve. And so I checked her chart out. 
and I'm feeling pretty confident that her, it's all fine. But there was nothing that made me go, what are you thinking? So there you have that, right? So it should be fine. And she's young and it's not that, that big of a deal. So anyway, thank you all for joining me this morning and I will see you all tomorrow morning. Happy birthday, Jennifer. Talk to you all later. <laughs> Bye.